Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Alhamdulillah uh, with the grace and the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we can continue our program of da'wah insyaallah to train 12000 PIP life coaches throughout the world where we we give the whole idea of Islamic motivation coaching mentoring and counseling you can go to our website Islamic psychology PIP uh, um, uh, our YouTube Islamic psychology PIP uh, Islamic motivation PIP and so on many other so that insyaallah we can contribute towards the development of the ummah in the 21st and 22nd century insyaallah so we have to move about to develop a, a, a very positive world view of Islam in terms of transforming our self family the ummah and humanity as we face this climate disaster that could engulf the whole world and that could even be the end of civilization in 100 years so what we need to do is to shift the internal dialogue of Muslims in terms of splitting uh, you are from this uh, Salafi group or you are from the Wahhabi group or you are from Ali Sunnah wa Jama'ah to try to bring about a unity of the Ummah which I've explained in my previous video and our book will be the heart of love so what is important is that when we talk about Islamic worldview in my previous video I have given you some idea of what an Islamic worldview will entail and I'm going to refer back again to Professor Said Nagib Alatas Prolegomena of the Metaphysics of Islam. This is a very good book, as I say. You you should those of you who are doing Sharia or philosophy uh, or modern uh, modernity vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Islamic religious idea. This is a very strong book, okay. And uh, you can find a reference of Professor Said Nagib Alatas, a very colourful uh, servant of Islam that has struggled uh, for my seventy years of his life. Huh? doing this kind of philosophical, uh, metaphysical understanding of the nature of our existence. Eh? So, I'm going to take another paragraph or two to give you some idea what it's all about. Alright? Okay, from the Islamic worldview, it is not gradually formed through a historical and developmental process of philosophers, speculation and scientific discovery, which must be of necessity be left vague and open-ended for future change and alteration in line with the paradigm that changes in correspondence with the changing circumstances. Eh? That means this is where uh, the secular theology, even the secular philosophy, the secular understanding of the existence of this world and so on is changing. I will explain to you. All right. They have not been in the history of the cultural, religious and intellectual tradition of Islam distinct ages characterized by a correspondence of a system of thoughts based on materialism or idealism supported by attendant methodological approaches and positions like empirism, rationalism, realism, normalism, pragmatism, positivism, logical positivism, criticism, etc. oscillating between the centuries that emerge one after another right until our time. The representation of Islamic thoughts, theologians, philosophers, metaphysicians have all and individually applied various methods in their investigation without preponderance to any one of the particular method. They combine in their investigation and at the time in their persons the empirical and the rational, the deductive and the inductive method and affirm no dichotomy between subjective and objective so that they all uh, affected what I would call the Tawhid method of knowledge. So from the Islamic perspective, it's a Tawhid method of knowledge. Yeah? The so-called development in religious tradition of mankind cannot be applied to Islam. For what is assumed to be developmental process is in the case of Islam only a process of interpretation and elaboration which must be of necessity occur in alternating generations of believers of different nations uh, and different countries eh? and which refers back to the unchanging source so Islam we have the source which uh, Said Nagib explained as such the view, well view of Islam is characterized by the all authenticity and the finality of points of what is ultimate and, is proje and, it, and it projects a view of reality and truth 
that encompasses existence of life altogether in a total perspective whose fundamental elements are permanently established. So this is the worldview of Islam. These are, to mention the most salient features, that means these are the salient features of this worldview of Islam, the nature of God. So what is the nature of God from the Ahli Sunnah wa Jama'ah, the Ash'ari, Mutridi, Kalam, uh, understanding which I will elaborate later on. The revelation, that means we have the word of Allah, the revelation from Allah, the Quran, and his creation of man and the psychology of the human soul. So what is the human soul and what is the psychology of the human soul, which I have elaborated uh, quite deeply in our book, Post-Islamic Psychology, A Transcendent Model to Achieve Peace and Happiness and Success, which you should try to get a copy. You can request for a free download PDF file, we'll give it to you. Alright, so this book you can request for a the full, the full book eh, will give you through PDF. If you want, you are doing studies and so on and you want to read this book, you can or you can purchase uh, the hard copy inshallah. So there is no man, uh, the, the, the most selling features are the nature of God of revelation that is the Quran of his creation of man and the psychology of the human soul of knowledge what is the nature of knowledge of religion of freedom of values and virtues of happiness all of which together with the key terms and concepts that unfold have profound bearing upon our ideas about change development and progress I propose here in this introduction to give you a gist only of some of these fundamental elements of the worldview of Islam, a, a comprehensive statement of this is of their nature is already set forth in, the, in this book. So what is important is that when we understand this perspective of the nature of Islam, we are not a circular, materialistic, ideological type of uh, civilization. Eh? The civilization of Islam uh, developed through the sources of revelation that means revelation in Islam explain the nature of Allah God who he is okay and then revelation explain who we are vis-a-vis -vis our creation so these are all uh, metaphysical questions that the secularists have no answer they are grouping in the dark Islam also answer what is the nature of consciousness all right what the nature of will and so on so from this perspective inshallah we can give you a better and deeper understanding because in the western civilization the root cause of the degeneration of the ummah okay and the degeneration of human civilization is that over the 17th and 21st century we latch on to materialism and physicalism so when we latch to that we have cut our root away from revelation, away from God-centeredness to material-centeredness. So we have, from the 17th century, we have Cartesian, Newtonian physics, Darwinism, Karl Marx, uh, communism, uh, socialism, and all this uh, supporting approach in terms of philosophy of life, nature of life, the way of life is all material. So we are influenced over the last three to four hundred years. So it is deep rooted in the psyche of the modern man. They cannot run away from here. But when they have to answer the very natural question of what is the nature of consciousness, no scientist can explain. What is the nature of existence on this life? They cannot explain. So now they are moving into metaphysics, all right? Philosophy based on idealism, based on uh, panpsychism based on uh, neo uh, pantheism all this kind of which is actually ancient this was studied by not only the muslims the the buddhists the taoists the hindus uh, and uh, many other civilization they have a worldview that is center on the absolute that means the absolute creator or the absolute uh, mind or the absolute universal consciousness whatever the name that they give or within Islam we use the framework of understanding that Allah created everything and he is the absolute so Allah is the absolute consciousness is an attributive aspect of his will his intellect his power and the manifestation of all his uh, 
realities that he manifested as we become and understand the nature of our existence and this life, which inshallah we will explain in a greater detail as we go through this book and this book of the book of my teacher. Alright, the tenants of Islam. Okay, inshallah, over a period of time. So I hope, as I say, going through this series of videos to excite some of you who wants to understand. Uh, especially if you are philosophically grounded to try to understand how we Muslims can actually overcome beyond materialism, beyond quantum realities, we can have a good and deep understanding of the true nature of consciousness and the true nature of all realities that is existence in the created world vis-a-vis -vis the true nature of the absolute Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the revelation that he has endowed upon his prophets Muhammad وسلم, and the previous prophet more than 124,000 of them and the sunnah or the saying of the prophet Muhammad وسلم, and how this is formulated or put together into various levels of M knowledge which we Muslims must appreciate the great servants, the thousands of millions of purified souls who have carried this through generation by generation, sanat by sanat, teacher by teacher, hand by hand to bring this beautiful truth to all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all and give them the best of Jannah. And may we all realize our purpose and meaning in life to know that we are the sincere servant of Allah, His Khalifa on this earth, always striving to make ourselves good, helping others to be good and making the world good, inshaAllah.